Hey folks, David Fine here from Watch Your Lip. Guys, I want to go through some of the best baits that we can use here out on the Atlantic shores, uh, off the Atlantic coast, Southeast Florida. I have before me a bunch of leftover bait from a fishing tournament and I want to go through each of them with you. So guys, check out these baits and we're going to talk about a little bit about how to use them, what they're good for, do's and don'ts, that kind of thing. Um, on shore, they work just as well, which we're gonna use them for here shortly. So guys, let's go through this video and let's go through some of our best bait fish down here in South Florida. Seven of our favorite bait fish to use while fishing offshore in Southeast Florida. So we just had a tournament where we were fishing and we actually used all of these fish in different ways for different things. And so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go through kind of what they all are and how we use them offshore. Um, I'm more mainly an onshore fisherman, but I, I figured since I have all this stuff left over, might as well lay them all out and just see what you guys think and which one of these baits you'd like to use for what, what's your favorite bait for each of the individual species. Uh, I know I've had some great experiences and let me know what you guys think. So first thing, uh, this is an Atlantic Bonito. And we actually caught these while we were out there. So we didn't actually use these in the tournament. But what we're going to do, I'm going to use this guy for shark bait. But I've got a whole bucket full of bonita there that I'm actually going to cut strips. And we're going to make bonita strips. And we're going to troll for wahoo and dolphin and, and tuna and stuff like that. And these are great baits to use for bonita strips. And so it's a great thing to have them. If you're going to have these fish... Uh, instead of buying ballyhoo, these are actually a lot more hardy than ballyhoo when you're trolling with them. And so I'd prefer to use bonita strips. Uh, I've, I've gained a nice liking for them. In fact, I just caught a wahoo on one, caught a blackfin tuna. We're really enjoying it. So we're gonna make another video on um, how we cut bonita strips. Onshore guys, bonita are amazing as well. And so we actually um can you can use them the strips on shore from the beach or from the piers jetties in the intracoastal um you can what we'll do is we'll strip these and the meat itself you can actually use and, and keep that for chunk bait and chum and that works well uh to attract fish um but the skin is super tough so super good to use for a, a lot of different things but if you really want to hook up to a beach monster you can take one of these guys and butterfly it and bring it out on a, uh, with the right permitting, of course, with your online, or you can get online, you can get a shark fishing permit, but this would be a perfect bait to use for big monster sharks uh, fishing from the beach. We don't do a whole lot of that, so we'll probably use these guys more for chunk bait or strips, because uh, I don't really get into the whole big, huge monster shark fishing from the beach. It's a little little dangerous, little sketchy, little controversial, and I personally don't feel like dealing with hammerheads and bull sharks. That's just my personal opinion. All right, now, we're gonna go up here to these, um, or let me, you know what, let's start with the smaller ones. So we have down here, I'm gonna move this guy up here for a reason I'll share, you'll see in why in a minute. These are what are called our scaled baits. And the scaled baits, well, if you were to run a knife along here, you can pluck off the scales and I think I've got a sardine scale right here on my fingers, okay? These are the scale baits, and the scale baits are phenomenal for tuna fishing. Uh, the kingfish will eat them, but really, if you wanna catch a, a tuna or a cobia, scale baits are phenomenal baits for that. They're not quite as hardy as these baits, our Blue Runner, our Goggle Eye, and our Cigar Minnow. They have scales, but it's a different kind of scale and they don't flake off when you touch the bait. It's, it's actually more of a hard bait. These guys are a lot more hardy and they stay on the hook longer, they live longer, they're stronger swimmers. These guys, you have to baby a little bit more, but tuna absolutely go nuts over these baits. And so what we'll start off with is our pilchard. And so this is our, our pilchard, is our one of our easiest baits to get down here in South Florida. Uh, they're on the beaches. These are the ones that we use most, 99% of the time on the beach for snook and tarpon, we will use pilchards and they're phenomenal bait. This is a medium sized pilchard. 
If we, if we had these on the beach, I'd be very happy. Uh, they get a bit bigger than this, and those are the ones that we really like to use offshore. Um, but pilchards are probably the easiest to get a hold of. They're the cheapest out of all of these. If you were to buy by the dozen, it's the cheapest one to buy and um, most readily available. And if you have a sabiki rig, you can find these and catch them pretty, pretty easily throughout the late spring, all throughout the summer and early fall months down in Southeast Florida. Now, very similar to a pilchard is the larger thread fin herring. Now they call it a thread fin herring because of this big long thread-like dorsal fin appendage off the back here. Now, thread fin herring look very similar. They, they are a little bit more wimpy in live wells. You have to keep flowing water on these guys, fresh water, or they die very quickly. Um, they have uh, one of the defining features besides the thread fin, they've got black tips on their dorsals and this black spot right here. And they're a little bit more wider down here in this midsection. And so uh, thread fins get larger and boy, oh boy, if you get a good thread fin going, um, that is like a good sailfish candy. Tuna love them, kingfish love them. Uh, it's a great, great bait, and we can actually find them inside in the intracoastal sometimes uh, down in Palm Beach and Broward counties. It's not as easy to find as the pilchards, but they are around. But also a scaled bait. They have these scales, and they're kind of wimpy, and they die quick, so you got to take care of them, and you got to baby them. But you also catch these with um, either a cast net or a sabiki rig. Small sabikis. You want the little tiny ones, little tiny sabikis. Now, these guys, these Spanish sardines, are the bait. This is the bait that we caught, I think, all of our tuna on in the last tournament. And this is a phenomenal bait. Um, they also die very quickly in a live well if you don't keep fresh water. So you've got to make sure if you're going to try and keep these alive that you have fresh water pumping in or they die very, very quickly. Um, but if you take care of them, they can actually be a very hardy bait and will last quite a while on a hook if you take care of them and baby them a little bit. Got to use lighter line, lighter tackle, lighter hooks. Uh, but if you do, s s sardines are the best. I mean, they're, they're a phenomenal bait. Um, tuna absolutely love them. In fact, the largest, we got, I think Eric Sonnenberg caught like a 55 pound Wahoo and it was on one of these bad boys, 180 feet off of Boca Raton. That was a long time ago, but that was one of the largest Wahoo I've ever had the privilege of uh, being uh, participating in. But sardines, guys, uh, we don't find them very regularly down here in South Florida. Uh, usually we are finding these guys a little bit further north in the Jupiter area, Stewart, the sardine schools are a lot more common. We used to see them down here in South Florida, but very rarely do we see them anymore. But usually April, May, early June, you'll see sardines. Uh, but you know, it, it's when you get them, they're real thick. You get them with a cast net. I think you can get them with sabikis, but the cast net's the way to go uh, for these uh, Spanish sardines. Phenomenal bait use them if you can. Now, going, moving away from the scale baits, we're going to go up here and we are going to look at some of our hardy baits. This is a cigar minnow. And cigar minnows are very, very tough to catch. Uh, they come up to chum. So if you want it, if you want cigar minnows, you go to a, a shallow reef and you chum and you chum and you chum and the, the cigar minnows will come in and then you can try to use little gold hooks and little bait them and try and get them to eat. Sometimes they'll eat sabikis, but they're very, very finicky. Um, the best way to get them is actually with a ballyhoo net and you know, put the ballyhoo net behind the boat, shake your chum bag when they come up, when these guys come up close to the boat, you pull your ballyhoo net in behind them and you catch them that way. Um, that's what I'm hearing. A lot of the guys are the way they're doing catching these guys, but love these baits. They are very hardy. They, they're very, very strong, strong swimming bait. And just about everything loves them. They get a little bit bigger than this too. So this is actually a smaller one, but boy, oh boy, if you get these guys, when we get these guys on the beach, sometimes mixed in with our pilchard schools, I always will put this out immediately if I catch this in a cast net and uh, they don't last long guys. If the pilchards aren't getting hit, put this out 
and it'll get smashed. Uh, but as you can see, they don't have those scales that the pilchards and stuff do. It's more of a hard skinned bait. Next bait, our blue runner. And a blue runner is the hardiest of all these baits. And they live and, and they swim and they're very, very, very strong. Um, catching blue runners, you gotta catch one by one, which is tough. And so if you wanna catch blue runners, you, you can use little jigs, sabikis, I use the bigger, larger sabikis. And um, you know, you control jigs and that kind of thing, but they will come up into your chum as well. These are what you would wanna use for your smoker kings. Cobia, like a, a bait like this, this size right here, is the perfect size bait for a nice big cobia, a smoker king, even a big sailfish. They love blue runners, and uh, or a wahoo, and even a wahoo. And so to, toothy, uh, toothy critters love blue runners, barracudas eat them, but cobias will suck them down as well. And on the beach, this, this is the bait of choice. If we're fishing on the beach, you hook these guys up while they're alive and let them swim out and you can catch all kinds of cool stuff. Black tip sharks, barracudas, tarpon, um, cobia. We've even caught cobia on them on the beach. And so very cool bait, love blue runners. Um, they, you limit a lot of the bycatch, like the smaller fish, smaller kingfish, won't, won't really eat them as much. Your bonita and your tuna typically won't eat a, a blue runner unless it's a smaller blue runner. Um, so if you have a big half pound blue runner out, you're gonna eliminate a lot of the smaller bycatch and you can focus on some of the larger fish that you're trying to capture, um, if, especially if you're in a tournament. Uh, you definitely want a blue runner or two out on your flat lines. Uh, if you're tournament fishing, you want those big kings, they're gonna eat that right there. Okay, finally, we'll move on to our goggle eye, big eyed scad, otherwise known as a goggle eye. And I have a shirt that says ounce for ounce for dollar is the most expensive fish in the ocean right here because tournament time well, they're about 80 bucks a dozen maybe more maybe up to 100 depending on the time of year and um boy oh boy goggle eye are i call them the snickers bar of the ocean because just about everything will eat them uh everything from a wahoo to sailfish kingfish mahi uh tuna Everything eats goggle eye, guys. And if we get them on shore, if we're on the beaches, we're on the piers, and you get goggle eye, um, you put these guys out, they'll get smashed. So uh, that does it for our bait selection. We used all of these in our last tournament and had a blast doing it. So guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, you know, let me know which one of these is your favorite bait to use. You know, I like, I like all of them for different things. Let me know which one you like to use. Let me know what has produced the largest fish for you out of all these here on this plate. And um, I'm gonna get to stripping our bonita and vacuum sealing some of our baits. So guys, hope you liked the video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we are gonna get fishing very, very soon with some of this bait. Take care now.